welcome race fans to the all finished concrete snow cross national presented by coast materials in west fargo north dakota points racing commences for pro and pro light this evening and it's a continuation of round one or round two for some of the other classes that competed this evening last evening excuse me including pro am women i'm Haley shanley up here in the booth alongside my friend robbie malinowski robbie welcome to the booth here officially points racing last night was so exciting amsoil dominator what stood out to you last night that the Polaris guys did their homework. They were really fast. They really showed that they had some stuff. And uh, now we get down to the real racing. And uh, we're going to have 15 guys out there all battling for that first place. I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, Polaris, great night for Polaris all across the board. Adam Peterson was flying. Travis Kern, I think, surprised a lot of people. And, of course, Cody Cam, after a winless three years, look what he had done. He pocketed the 10K. So we have a big night ahead of us. So we're going to kick things off with opening ceremonies down trackside with Josie Christian and Erica Allred. Thanks, Haley. And, Robbie, you were right. Players did do their homework, but I think these guys are fired up. I was walking around the pits earlier today, and Elias said that was not his race. He wants nothing to do with that. He is moving forward, and I think we're going to see a little fire under his sled tonight. And also, Jordan LaBelle, I think that pro riding got him a little fired up as well. But kind of looking around, we have a pretty dominant class for both pro light and pro, and it's going to be really exciting, and it's the beginning of the season. I know, Josie, if last night's racing is any indication of the battles we're going to see this season, we are truly in for a treat. From veteran riders to new faces to team switch-ups and changes to retirement and more this season. And silly season has been full of excitement. I'm very excited to see a renewed Cody Cam, the sophomore season for Adam Peterson and Travis Kern, and what I think will be a very tight championship battle. Oh, it absolutely will be. And speaking of Adam Peterson, let's also loop in Riley Bester because they have Kyle Poli he is now retired, but I was talking to him earlier and he was so excited. And I think that perspective from a previous rider is going to be huge for those guys going into tonight. But we have a lot of things to take care of. We're about to go racing. There are a few things we need to do. First, we're going to give it to Jake Veneta from FXR Mobile Medical for a prayer. Thanks, Erica. On behalf of Amsoil Championship Snowcross. It's my honor to open up this night of racing with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this great sport. Thank you, Lord, for a chance that we get to go racing right here in Fargo. Lord, you have cranked up winter, and we're about ready to crank up racing. So, God, I pray for a blessing tonight. I pray we see a fierce battle. As Josie and Erica were just talking, these guys are ready to go to kick off this season. We saw a little bit of it last night in the Dominator, and now we're going to see them go head-to-head, -head, mano a mano, battling it out on the track. So, Lord, we pray for safety for every athlete. God, thanks to you, the God of horsepower. You're the God of racing, and we get to do this great sport that we love in this beautiful state of North Dakota. We love you. You're an awesome God, and I pray this in the powerful and mighty and kick-butt name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jake Veneta. It is truly amazing to have you and the FXR Mobile Medical Team here for us tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, will you all please stand, remove your hats for the presentation of the colors by the Fargo Public Schools Air Force Junior ROTC under the, decor under the direction of Colonial Stephen Muse and Chief Master Sergeant James Gibson. The Color Guard team is commanded by Cadet Justice Johnson. And we will also be having Kim Woody sing our national anthem. Thank you fans for coming out, for getting cold with us. And on behalf of Woody's Racing, it's my honor and my privilege. Oh say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red and glare the bombs burst in, in air, gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, who saved us that starred spring on banner getting way o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now let's meet our top five riders from how they finished at the end of the 2022 season. Starting out with our fifth rider last season, backed by Monster Energy, Polaris, FXR, and Pertec out of Kansasville, Wisconsin. This is the 53, your two-time Amsoil Dominator winner, Cody Cam. Cody Cam, you got your second Amsdale Dominator Championship last night. That's got to be exciting. And now we go into tonight. You got a little bit. You got that first win out of the way, no matter what, whether it was for points or not. Talk about going into tonight, what you're going to do so you can get on top when everyone's out there. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun riding yesterday. Uh, first day on the track with the whole circuit, all the guys, and uh, lots of fun. Came out with the win. And tonight, uh, practice went well. Just looking forward to some good starts and some fun racing. Well, good luck tonight. And your fourth place rider at the end of the 2022 season, he is backed by Polaris, Klein, Jack Lings from Sorsele, Sweden. He is the number 31 Polaris rider of Judnik Motorsports, Emil Har. last season you got a huge confidence boost especially coming out of that season but you did have a little injury at the end and it didn't end the way you want to so this year's a little bit of redemption starting out talk about how going into the season means a lot to you uh, I don't know I had a good season last year and, and I want to start where, where I ended kind of so uh, I'm gonna try to be up there top three try to get some first first places also looking forward to it good luck tonight And your third place rider last season in the Amsoil Pro Championship is Francis Pelletier, backed by Makita, Skidoo, Baja Jerky, FVP, GMC from Warner Racing. He comes from all the way up north in St. Felicien, Quebec. He is the 220 Skidoo rider. Again, this is Francis Pelletier.
Francis, as you and I were talking earlier, we learned that preseason looked a little different for you as you worked out for the first time ever, thinking that's going to give you a little confidence, motivation going into the season, but we just got off of practice a little bit ago, so talk to me about the track and the conditions out there. Yeah, it was pretty icy in practice, but we're going to go through the first weekend, and I'm going to be happy with that. Well, good luck tonight. For Amsoil, the U.S. Air Force, Skidoo, Climb, Four Trucks, Milwaukee Tool, Jeff Foster Trucking, Fox Shocks, Woody's Action Graphics, Hayes Rocks, CNA Pro Skis, ARI. He is from Heartland, Vermont, the number eight Skidoo, Hunter Patnode. Hunter ending in that number two spot last year. Talk about what you did during the preseason to hopefully improve and get to that number one spot this year. Yeah, I just worked really hard. Uh, worked on fitness and, uh, you know, in the preseason, just trying to get the sled as best as we can and get the uh, suspension set up as good as we can get it. And, yeah, now we're here, so we're going to see how it all paid off. Well, good luck tonight. Your four-time champion, racing for Skidoo, FXR, Aluminum Cabinet Company, racing for Thien Motorsports Skidoo, the number 200, the Viking Rocket from Opdal, Norway, Elias Ischel. Elias, this year you're going for title number five. Huge milestone for you. But you have a target on your back. All these guys want this just as much as you do. So what are we going to see from Elias Ischel this year? Yeah, I need to be fast all year, of course, be smart. And uh, uh, like I always say, I'm going to try to do my best and uh, have fun out there. Uh, I know everyone uh, wants to get uh, the championship, of course. So everyone is, uh, uh, I have a target on my back, of course. But uh, I'm going to do my thing and uh, let's see how, how far that takes me. And uh, yeah, uh, it's super fun to see all the fans out there and everyone that watched. Uh, so yeah, it's awesome. Well, good luck tonight. Thank you. Now let's take a look at this course, Robbie. Starting out with the stud boy hole shot, what are we looking at? All right, this is the starting line. We go into a drop off into the longest, widest rhythm section on the track. This is gonna make and break you. And if you don't find rhythm, you will get tired. I uh, I know from experience from back <laughs> in the day, so. Such an emphasis on timing at this track. That takes us through the Arctic Cat Corner. Then here we go back towards the grandstands, the Polaris rhythm section. Now back towards the front stretch. And you can get an idea of how steep those walls are into this humongous triple. Land, get on it again. Another massive triple. There rhythm section. Go ahead. And there we go. Sorry <laughs> to cut you off there, Robbie. We had seen so much action go down right here in this FXR corner. Curious to see if as many riders are going to favor that inside. It made for some slicing and dicing, and that's about a lap. Yeah. Roll in. 
Hopefully you get a little neck burn from those uh, flames off the finish line. Hey, Josie, I hear you have something down there. What's going on? You guys, you're lucky you are inside right now. It is pretty cold out here, but talking about the track conditions we have going on, it is icy underneath, and then they have that sugary snow sitting on top, which is gonna cause for a lot of roost going into tonight, especially for that final one. We're seeing a lot more riders. We got the 10 in front and 10 in back, but these heats are gonna be important so they can get those spots that they want. We see those guys are favoring that outside spot on the start line. So let's see where they'll line up right now. Yeah, really great insight, Josie. With these track conditions, with as many riders as we are going to see in these finals and these stacked heat races, Robbie, in your opinion, what are the keys to tonight's race? Well, first thing is that start, always, any race you go to. That start is going to be important. But then second of all, if you don't get the start, find some clean lines, clean air, and try to get to the front as fast as you can. That first lap is so crucial because it is a big track, and it, guys can stretch it out and get away from you. And there's just... You know, look at the parity. We're sitting here looking at practice lap times. The top four are all within one second. So it's not like uh, anybody's walking away with this right now. No, not at all. At least not at this point in the evening. Yeah, Emil Har being our fastest practice times tonight, followed by Cody Cam, Elias Ishul, Hunter Patnone, and Dan Benham, the top five in practice. Let's check out who is all lining up for round one of your Amsoil Pro Class Heat one. First in the gate pick, we have Travis Kern, the number 201 Polaris, followed by Emil Har, number 31 Polaris for Judnick Motorsports, and Peter Narsa, Oscar Norm, Francis Pottier, Elias Ischel, and Adam Peterson. Heating the pipes up to temperature. Emil Har electing to go way outside on this. Maybe not the best uh, choice. We don't know what his pick was, but. We'll see how he makes it through there. Here we go. First Amsoil Pro heat of the night. And we are green off the stud boy hole shot as they enter the turn one. Looks like it might be one of the shearing speed sports sleds. No. Oh, forgive me, 201, Kern. Travis Kern. Great right. hole shot, great starter. Travis Kern has proved to be so far this weekend. Looks like Elias Ishul making some moves early, getting into second place. Hard tripling in the back. <laughs> Talk about big risk. No one took bigger risks last night than Emil Har. Here he goes, charging for that lead side by side with Kern, and he gets the advantage. Elias making a move on Travis. Jumping into second. Yeah, Elias, Elias making quick work of making his way through the field. Peaks to the inside. Nope. Emil Har just had enough speed. Francis Pelletier all over the back of the tunnel of the 201. We're still quite bunched up, especially in the back of the field. About to go through the U.S. Air Force Big Air section, the U.S. Air Force flyaway. Now, this one was really tricky, talking to a number of the pro women yesterday and a few of the other pro racers, but it uh, looks like they may have it figured out today. Skidoo rhythm section here. We are t going towards the back stretch. Emil Har still at the advantage side-by-side -side battle at the back of the pack. That appears to be Adam Peterson and Oscar Norum. I'm impressed right now, Norin riding as well as he is. He had a massive crash last night. I think uh, we were all a little worried on how he was going to look today. But uh, he answered the bell and looks pretty solid right now. Yeah, it was actually right about at that point he was going for the quad. He was eyeing it up earlier in the day. He's like, I think I, I think I got to try it. I don't know, but a risky move to make a non-points race. And of course, the Amsoil dominator, but he put on quite the show, a gnarly wreck, but so great to see him walking away from this one and looking so highly competitive as he goes through the outside. And the battle we have going on right now that my eyes are on is that battle for second. Yeah, Travis isn't letting up. He's right on Elias. He's making uh, some smarter line choices, it looks like, right now. And I don't know why that is or what's happening, but he's just able to get a, a good view on some of those uh, rhythm sections. And I think we're seeing a new chapter in the book of Travis Kern. He has just turned a page since he came out here swinging yesterday in the Amsoil Dominator, won his first two rounds. So Travis Kern has looked phenomenal. And like you said, Polaris had done their homework, man. And Elias Ischel, though, he is keeping him, uh, the Travis Kern keeping Elias Ischel honest. Elias not able to gain much ground over the 201. No, not at all, but Emil Har making moves. And then look at this, Travis trying to get a ski inside. Going to force the issue. Curious to see what Ishul's going to do. Ishul goes low. Got to go where they ain't. Travis Kern goes high. 
That right there is what I like to see out of Travis. He's making uh, decisions of, you know, where I can go where Elias isn't. And you can't pass anybody if you follow him everywhere. So he's, he's really matured as a racer. He really has. And when he stepped up to the pro class last year in a preseason testing in those first few rounds, he said one of the things that I've had to adapt to is the reaction time. You don't have as much reaction time to at your disposal here in the Amsoil pro class. So you've got to be thinking on your feet, make quick decisions and make quick work of it. And still he continues to force the issue on Ishul. Uh, I thought he might have had it through the Arctic cat corner, but he has not given up, but still hanging out front, enjoying that clean air. Emil Har looking so strong tonight. No doubt he was a little banged up and bruised, but no harm, no foul after yesterday's wreck. Like we talked about earlier, Robbie, and these two continuing into the FXR corner. Elias Ishul setting the pace. They have to go high. Elias Ishul continues to lead the 201. I'll be curious to see what happens in that corner on this last lap because it looks like Travis is trying to play like the I'm going to go this side every time and, and maybe he bait and switch uh, for the last lap and try to get it inside of Elias. Yeah, and taking a look at this field right now, the gap between, between your race leader and our last place finisher right now, that battle for the last position, Adam Peterson and Peter Narsa are going at it here, but uh, only eight seconds of difference. So it's not like this whole field has spread out all that much. So we're keeping our eye on that side-by-side -side battle at the front of the field. Emil oh. Har is kind of checked out. Well, Whoa. he was, but he made a little mistake there. So he still has plenty of lead. Got to hang on. This is the final lap. One more corner to go for Emil Har, the number 31. Juddick Motorsports Polaris rider through the FXR corner. Uh-oh. Look what, who joined the party right here. Francis Pelletier <laughs> He's cranking gonna cut up the inside. Win. No, not enough. Nice, nice job by Travis. Good run by Francis. Your heat race winner going to be Emil Haar as they cross that finish line. Followed by Elias Ishul, Travis Kern. Francis Pelletier is living into that fourth place position, followed by Oscar Norum. As we wait for our timing and scoring to catch up, Officially here, Peter Narsa, the number 27, followed by Adam Peterson, rounding out your field for this round one heat one qualifier. Man, what a great race that was. Great run in the late stages by Francis Pelletier to catch up like that, making things interesting. That was a great race, top to bottom. Coming up on round one, heat two for the Amsoil Pro Class. As they get stacked up at the Studboy finish line, Josie, what do you know? Well, after that last race we had going, they're getting ready to go right now. It's about who's going to take that start line out there. It looks like a player's got the whole shot. Thanks so much, Josie. We'll check back in in just a little while. Yeah, this race is underway here out front. You're right, the Polaris led. That is the 21, Cole Katu. Hey, and guess what? We've got two Katoos getting hole shots, uh, Katoo Motorsports sleds, sorry. So obviously they've got something figured out and Cole just launching that triple, looking great. And my eyesight failed me in that last race because here are the two sharing speed sports sleds battling for the second place position. Teammates Logan Christian and Hunter Patnode, they are eyeing up that lead position. And again, no team orders in Snowcross, so these two are going to duke it out ski to ski. But Hunter Patnode able to gain the advantage over his teammate and just two Logan Christians outside Last night's Amsoil Dominator winner, Cody Cam. Man, Cole Katu continues out front here as they make their way onto the back stretch. So right now, Cole Katu playing great defense over a hard charging number eight Hunter Pat node. And when you're in the lead, Robbie, do you like to see a battle going on behind you? Uh, I love it, but what I don't like to see is Cole Katu getting get a little excited in that rhythm section, kind of gave up the lead there. So. That's not a, a ideal, but now you uh, you learn from that mistake, shake the cobwebs off, and, and get back after it. Yeah, and if it's a guy who knows how to stay loose and keep his mind clear out there, I know it's Cole Katu, but we had seen Logan Christian battling for that second place position, bar to bar with Cole Katu going into that final corner. Cole Katu takes the outside, oh. gets turned up, clips the ski, gets turned over, collects. Cody Cam, I believe. Yeah. So Cole and Cody down. Ooh, tough break for the duo of Polaris riders. 
sharing speed sports going over the U.S. Air Force flyaway section. They are setting sail, taking flight. We'll see if Logan Christian has anything for the number eight. Yeah, they look absolutely solid right now, those two up front. Logan has prime selection of these lines right now. He knows how to pick them. That's really working in his favor, but one of the most well-rounded riders out there. He has turned many laps in the Fargo area. I really like what I'm seeing from Logan Christian. And again, his teammate Hunter Patnode out front. We heard earlier in his interview with Josie, he said added pressure is nothing but the enemy. So when he's at that start line, he's clearing his mind, setting himself up for races like this. We're catching an eyeful of the battle that is between Jacob Yurk and Aki Palaya. Or excuse me, Daniel Benham and Aki Palaya. Daniel Benham, a winner here in West Fargo just one year ago for all finish racing Arctic Cat. Yeah, not exactly ideal for Daniel Benham right now. He's, you know, obviously wishing he's up front. The, the start is what he uh, obviously missed on, and I think you're going to see a different Daniel Benham if he can get up front early. Yeah, we'll see how much that Daniel Benham's able to make up here, but Aki Palaya cruising right along. And one thing that I think we all can believe is that if there's just no gimme races every one of these guys are capable of running up front you can see that so it's uh it's just so competitive from the top to the bottom it is a no athlete out here handing one another a gift you have to earn it you have to earn it hard here in the amzol pro class hunter pat node we are on lap three of four so he's going to see the white flag next time by continues to be trailed by his teammate the 43 and he's opening up a nice little gap right now this is uh what I would consider a lot of fun. You're out front, you know you, get, you have your teammate behind you so you know nothing crazy is gonna happen. Uh, you could just kind of focus on your rhythm, your lines, and uh, I guarantee he'll come off this racetrack right now and not even feel like he's winded at all because he, he's just in that low state. And not only that, Robbie, but these two, not just teammates, but best of friends. So when these two uh, linked up as teammates just one year ago, they immediately hit it off. And Hunter Patton was telling me that they just, they enjoy racing together so much. They're going to race each other clean, but they're going to race each other hard. So we'll see if Logan Christian has that in store for us with Hunter Patton. But Hunter Patton, as you can see, uh, Logan Christian taking that inside line, trying to make something happen there. 2.3 seconds the distance between Hunter Patno and Logan Christian. Aki Palai in that third place position. 4.9 seconds behind your race leader. And we're actually taking the checkers. Forgive me, Hunter Patno going to be your heat race winner. Followed by Logan Christian, Aki Palaya, Daniel Benham, and Cody Cam. Kolka 2 makes his way around as well. So Kolka 2 is going to finish this one.